you found yourself on another episode of Locked on Bulls. In today's episodes, the Bulls are still inconsistent. The Bulls play one of the best April Fool's jokes that they could have possibly played on Bulls fans. We'll talk about that and explain a little bit more. Also, we're going to talk about what should the Bulls focus be over the final six games. And the Bulls are now locked in at least to a playing spot forever. That's worth. We'll talk about that as well. All that and more on today's Locked on Bulls. You are Locked On Bulls, your daily podcast on the Chicago Bulls, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for tuning in to Locked On Bulls, member of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every single day. That's Pat, the designer, host, and creator of the Windy City Breeze and host of the Chicago Bears podcast over at ESPN 1000. I'm Hayes, host, creator of Chicago Bulls and Chicago Bears Central YouTube pages and podcasts. And today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NBA for $20 off your first purchase. Pat. This is an important game for the Bulls. They faced off against the Atlanta Hawks, a team that they came into this game with a one and a half game advantage over for that night seed. Uh, the Bulls magic number uh, coming into this game as well was one to lock in a playoff spot, a play in spot. They either would have needed to win one more game or the Brooklyn Nets lose a game. Luckily, the Brooklyn Nets do lose. We'll talk about that here in a second. But uh, Pat, how do you feel about the performance by our Bulls today? <laughs> I mean, what performance? I, it, it's it's the same team that we've been talking about the entire time. And listen, I, what I say, I said they finished the month of March nine and seven. They mm-hmm. finished eight and eight. Okay. Yeah, I mean, like they're they're heading into April being the same team that they were coming out of March, a five hundred team. And Demar Derozan could sit there and he could talk about it's not who we are. Yes, it is. Your record is who you are. <laughs> I get it. It's cute. It's fun. I I love the the uh, um you know the the rhetoric of we're not what our record says we are and we're better than that and we can be better no you're not you're a 500 team at best at best with everybody healthy at best you're a 500 team like honestly like i'm just but i'm pat I'm, if if patrick williams wouldn't have went down if 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 Zach Levine with wouldn't have went person. down, I'm started just, with the absolute worst person. If, you if the could Bulls, have. if the Bulls players saw a podiatrist more uh, often, we're talking about a, a 46 win team there, brother. Listen, dog. I mean, I I don't know, but the, the, this 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 says it best to me. Yeah, you know I mean, no, we you know I mean we we just we, the Bears are what we thought they were. What what, what we thought they were. We played them in preseason. Who the hell takes a third game in a preseason like it's bull? We played them in the third a game. Everybody ago, played three quarters. The Bears are who we thought they were. And that's why we took the damn field. That's why we took now, the court. If you want to crown them, then crown their ass. Crown them. But they are who we thought they were. And we let them off the hook. And we still didn't win the Super Bowl that year either. R.I.P., man. R.I.P. What a great. That's, uh, a, uh, that's a legendary rant. In this legendary game tonight. Rant. Uh, the uh, Atlanta Hawks went 19 of 40 from three point range. The Bulls went seven of 28. That means that the Atlanta Hawks scored 36 more points from three point range than the Bulls did. Uh, Pat, you 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 talk about this a lot. Simple math, bro. Um, do you think that AK is sitting anywhere in 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 at, at the UC and is hoping that um, is can he fix math? Can he fix a math problem? Is the question? Can AK actually count? Is the question that, that we have there? No, um, I'm. I listen. How many times do I have to say it? Like it, it, it's simple math. You don't shoot enough threes. You don't make enough threes. It's the team that you are. You don't take enough threes to make enough threes. Twenty eight, dog. Oh. Twenty eight. And here's the problem: you don't defend well enough in games like this on the three point line when a team gets hot. Like that. Like the, as much praise as I gave them last night for getting out and putting a hand up. My God, what did we see tonight? What happened to all of that? You know I mean, like, it's just, it's, it's mind boggling to me watching this team. And, and when I hear the comments, like DeMar says, where the, this is not the team that we, that we believe we should like, bro, like the, the team you were last night is not the team you are tonight. And I would, I would 
understand it if you were right second game of a back-to-back there's something that does go into that i'm not going to sit here and slander second game of a back-to-back but second game of a back-to-back and you're sitting here having the conversation not on you playing the same way but looking lethargic but you looking like a completely different basketball team your defensive principles look absolutely different your uh, uh your your offensive scheme i mean that's that's changing night by night at this point like it it depends on what team shows up that night basically like like there there is the fix to this goes deeper than just the players on the team to me i no, i think it should be like, to everyone because <laughs> Here's the thing, and I'm sorry to cut you off, Pat. I'm sorry, but you triggered me. The fact is, is that you say it goes deeper. Yeah, because we still have a team that doesn't even move without the basketball. There's no coach in the NBA worth their salt that sees a team consistently move without the basketball. And in three, you couldn't fix it in three years? Three years of nobody moving without the ball besides Javante, Alice Caruso, and Andre Drummond? That's it? But see, here's the thing. Does that speak to a willingness to do it? You've got a lot of players that, let's be real, DeMar DeRozan has never been a great move without the basketball player. Nikola Vucevic has never been a great move without the basketball player. Zach Levine, for God's sakes, has never been a great move without the basketball player. Well, I think it also goes he, to- he turned himself into one of the better catch-and-shoot players in the NBA. you got to move without the ball to do that. But I mean, Or I just stand in the corner and wait till it rotates back to me. I mean, that's not... <laughs> He had Tom Thibodeau as his coach on the other side. Come on. <laughs> I mean, I mean, well, I mean no, he, he didn't have Fibs. He so wasn't he had, that he, when he played for, for no, he Tibbs. Had, uh, he, saying, had, yeah. uh, he had, what's his name? Not Thibs. Uh, he passed away. Uh, rest in power. Um, oh, my God. I can't think oh, of his name. Uh, 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 um, Flip. Flip Saunders. Uh, Saunders. Yeah. Flip Saunders. He had so, Flip yeah, Saunders as his coach. Flip Saunders. Um, but, I mean, I, I'm not going to sit here and say, like, you couldn't stand around in that offense either. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, like, I, now I do agree with you, but I just think that, listen, at a certain point, you're looking for a certain type of player. And I think here's the thing. You're looking for the players that can be the everyman player. You're looking for the players that can sit there and do more defensively and they can do enough offensively. Guess what those players usually aren't looking to do? They're usually not looking to put the ball in the air. You've got two players, maybe three on this team that are looking to lift the ball in the air. I'd say Kobe. DeMar's doing it from the mid-range, but we're talking about from a three-point perspective here. I'd say you're talking about Kobe White, Ayo DeSumo as of the last two and a half, three months, and I like that. I like the the, the trajectory he's taking. And Torrey Craig? I mean, is there somebody else who's literally, like, looking to put the ball in the air from the three-point line? Like, well, that's the thing, though, and that's why I go back to, like, don't get me wrong. Like you said, the makeup of your team is the makeup of your team as far as the players that you brought in here. You didn't bring true shooters in. You brought in some players that can shoot. That yes. is what it is. But you make the offense. I don't care if you're a three-point shooting team or not. You don't move without the ball. Everything on offense gets harder for you. Every 100%. single thing on offense gets harder for you. But so I that's why it's like from the – from... We got a team full of ISO guys, though, right? Like, like – as much as I love Kobe, I think Kobe has turned himself into a move without the ball player. What was he drafted as, though? He uh, Kobe wasn't really an isolation player, though. I mean, he can score in isolation, but Kobe was a, a mix between a, a shooter and a scorer, and they would try to refine it. I think he became a a more of a of a of a shooter to start off with, but. I don't know if necessarily Kobe's a true isolation player. He is a take you off the dribble player, but maybe not an isolation player. Um, but I think you have a team full of players that want to play fast, and we don't do that either. I think you got one guy on the team that stops that. Well, I'm you not do, gonna you say have that. two. You, you have two guys it. on the team that yeah. stop that, and they're your two highest played, highest paid guys on the team right now. Yeah, yeah, that sucks. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like that. That really sucks when you sit there and look at your two highest paid players on the team, and you see your team get out in transition, and the big man's not in the middle. You got problems. Think about how, like, like it, it's not 2008 basketball is not the basketball that you can play today. But think about how Derrick Rose used to run the floor, get the ball off the glass, gone. Who's following him down the floor? Joe, Taj. Those are the, and you reward them. There's nobody to reward anymore. There's nobody running back there. Vooch is... 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, drums running, but drums getting what? What drum get tonight? Uh, uh, 19 minutes? 20, well. What Close drum end up playing? Yeah, tonight? a little over 20 minutes. 20 minutes, four seconds. A little, a little over 20 drum. minutes. You know what, the, what that means? That the freshest guy on the court that can run the ball isn't running the most. <laughs> like, it's 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 who the teams I did. I, I've said this for a lot of the season at this point, and, and it's redundant, and I'm sorry if you've heard it a bunch of times, but this iteration of the Bulls is who the Bulls are supposed to be. This iteration of the Bulls is a one basket difference offensively and defensively. There's nothing that changes. Nothing's different from the Lonzo era. Nothing's different than that 35 games. Shout out to that. Nothing's different from the post Lonzo era with DeMar going out and breaking Wilt records. Nothing's different from the Lonzo or from the uh, Zach and DeMar era where they were sitting there giving you a 500. There's nothing different. Well, I'd say the play style is different, but the results are still the same, and the results are more are, are importantly what you're trying to change. And I, I mean, that's that's yeah. the, that's the di- like if your results are the same, that means nothing's different. Like, yeah, we passed the basketball more there. What we change? Well, uh, we we uh, defended one basket better than we scored. Oh, okay. Uh, what's different now? Well, we score one basket better than we defend. Oh, well, you're okay. still talking results, but how you get there, I do think is important because it's how you can get out of it, right? Because if you, the fact that you do have so many players now on this roster that do like to play, again, not, and I know you understand what I'm saying for the listeners, that n- not run and gun, but do like to play faster. If you decide to finally make your roster make sense, at least you have that to jump off of to a degree. Is AK going to make a roster that makes sense? That's where we all sit. That's where the qu- biggest question is. And that's where we have no, the, Hell, I I did hell of what's going to happen, but we're well overdue. I got to get to this, Harry. Next up, though, we're going to be talking about the Bulls' final six game and what the team should focus on on those final six games. But before we get into that, I got to talk to you guys about BetterHelp. This segment is brought to you by our sponsor, BetterHelp. Sometimes we all need the opportunity to get something off our chest. Big or small, certain things can really start to get to you. It's important to let that out, especially to someone who's unbiased on your life. So today, I want to say how I really feel about something. You might even be thinking the same thing this week, and that is the Bulls are stressing me out. And maybe the maybe better help can help the Chicago Bulls figure out how to defend the three-point line. Therapy can be different for everyone. Most of us have bigger problems than our favorite sports team, and it's important to get things off your chest every once in a while. If you're thinking about starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be flexible and suited to your schedule. Visit betterhelp.com slash locked on NBA to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H E L P.com slash locked on NBA. All right, Pat, we got six games left, bro. And I'll tell you what, I'm not even going to lie to you. Let's just get these. Can we play them six days all in a row? Let's just get it over with. Um, but we we got we have uh, three days off before we play again on Friday. Um, what do you think should be the Bulls' focus as, as they you know over these last six games they're locked into a plan? What's something that you would like to see them work on realistically that maybe they can, they can't really change too much with six games left, but maybe they can kind of focus and prioritize? What do you think of that? Um, <laughs> it's a difficult question to ask, right? I mean, dog, I I'll just the answer. Because because here's the thing, it, the, the focus needs to be a massive change. It needs to be a massive shift in, in who you've been over for you. Like, I can't, I'm trying to pinpoint one thing here that, that changes, that you can change in six games that hasn't been an issue for us the entire time that we've been doing this show. Um, I... I, I guess in theory, defense is something that can change. You're not going to change your shot profile. Locking in defensively can change over the next six games. That it it can. Like it, there is a commitment defensively that can happen that speaks to more of a long term fix than being able to knock down shots with a bunch of players that can't shoot that well. Um, I I would say the the best I've got for you is play the perimeter better and um stay locked in on your rotations don't get don't get lost on stuff i mean they got lost on dumb rotations tonight like I, i'd get it if like you were lost on stuff we haven't seen but like you just beat a team rotating the right way 
That's the yeah. best team in the Western Conference. And tonight it was like, hey, where's the third rotation? Where I I loved right. Rudy Gobert's down low. Ball goes down to Rudy. You kick it out to Anthony Edwards. He tries to penetrate. You kick it up top, and you just see the Bulls on a string. You see Vooch go down or Drum go down. You see uh, uh, um, uh, DeMar pop out and just flash just to kind of throw things off. You see Vooch step over. You see the power forward step up. Whoever's in there at that point could have been Javon Carter, could have been Javante Green, probably somebody under 5'5". Five, five. Um, and then all of a sudden, you see the ball kicked up to the top, and you see Io flash over, hands up, and he's making it a contested three. It's a Christmas miracle that something like that works. My God, is it December again? I know Easter just passed, but I guess we're right at the other side of Jesus here. Like, like you just did it. Versus the best team in the NBA. Or the best team in the Western Conference, I should say. I guess Boston's the best, but. Yeah. And I now versus an Atlanta team that, my God, they're trying to figure out which ends their head and which ends their butthole. You, you can't. Figure out how to play defense. You can't figure out how to rotate. You can't figure out how to stop anybody. Clint Capella. There's nothing even else to say to that. I'm just saying Clint Capella. The problem with the, the Bulls team, again, and like you said, this has been a problem for a while. Like, And it worked better when Lonzo it, uh, was, that's one thing that did work better. They want to be the, like, Billy Donovan still wants to switch everything. And we get burnt on the switch every single time. Like, it's just, I get it that it's modern NBA to switch. But Vooch can only play drop coverage. When you switch and you have a player that can only play drop coverage and DeMar DeRozan is one of the God worst, worst god-awful pick-and-roll defenders in the NBA and one of those two guys are always on the court, that's going to hurt everything. You Like, because all you got to do is terrible at that, too. Huh? Like my my issue with Vooch isn't that like Vooch has never been a good defender. He's a terrible drop coverage defender as well. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He can only like, do one you thing. Haven't come up and he's with still anything terrible with that. Fix that. There's nothing to fix because there's not there's there's only a few ways you can play defense in the NBA, Pat. And Vooch no, no, I'm not. I'm not even talking about Vooch, but you know how like listen, how many teams do we want? The, the team we just played tonight. How many players do they have to hide on defense? Now they're a terrible defensive team. But it's because they have so many players they have to hide. But you look at the Warriors during their run. You look at, I mean, like, there's there's a million teams we can name where it's like somebody sat there and was like, this guy sucks. We've got to figure out how to hide the fact that he sucks. And that's what switching is supposed to do. But then you suck at switching. That's literally what switching is supposed to get you. I know. Like, <laughs> <laughs> that's the conundrum we're in. The thing that makes the most sense for us to do, we can't do effectively. I don't know, bro. I, I don't know. Like, I, I keep saying this, and I, I'll say, <laughs> hey, look, I'll tell you this much. You, The other side of this is what the White Sox are in right now. Get ready, boys. Take Kobe that. White, Yohan Mankad, or Co I say Kobe White is, uh, Kobe White's Luis Robert. I would assume it was Yohan Mankata. It's so all you're going to have left after this. Prepare yourself. Bro, that's what we say. It's not going to happen. AK is going to find a way, bro. Let's still get, sell us some continuity. Bro, I'm going to say this right. I, I'm going to say this right. Like, Zach Levine's Tim Anderson. Yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd say that DeMar's Dylan Cease. Yeah, a little older, a lot older. But I'd say DeMar's a Dylan Cease. Or maybe Kobe White's Dylan Cease. I don't know. But, like, the the the... Similarities between these teams is just it it's it's disgusting. And it it tells you where things really start. It tells you where this all really begins at. I'm sick of it, bro. I got nothing, bro. Hey, <laughs> hey, so we're we're, we're Sox and Bulls fans, bro. Like what, what, hey, what I'm gonna tell you this right now. I had this conversation. I we might have had this conversation on lockdown. I don't know. If the Sox left, would you follow them? If they left Chicago? If they left Chicago, would you follow them? No. If the Bulls left, would you follow them? Yes. Yes. It's tough. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's tough. yes. If they became the Nashville Bulls? They gave the Nashville Bulls? The Nashville Bulls, you know what I mean? I mean, hey, I'm, I, I'm not going to lie to you. I might not follow them, bro. 
Because what are you giving me? What are you working towards? What are you What are you trying to compete for? Dog, the team we talk about in our minds was less than a decade ago. It wasn't. Our fondest team in 20 years was in 2010. That's crazy. That's 14 years ago. For you, that's at least one kid ago. Do your damn ass read, you bastard. <laughs> I'm just saying, no, my bad. That wasn't a shot. I mean, good job. Like, I don't know. <laughs> You're almost done. <laughs> I am. Thank God. <laughs> Shout out to you. Hey, man, uh, before we uh, before we keep this thing going, man, we got we got to tell you guys all about uh, Bulls officially being locked in for the play-in. Yay! Shut the f- uh, we got to tell you guys all about game time, man. I mean, listen, here's the thing about game time. Last minute deals, uh, flash deals, zone deals, all in pricing. I mean, game time is giving you everything. And they are now an authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball, which makes getting tickets even faster and easier, which is impressive if you're a White Sox fan, because you would think. It's super easy to get tickets for a dollar. Prices on the game time app actually go down the closer it gets the first pitch, though. So, I mean, hey, we talk about what, 98 cents here? You can't go wrong there. Uh, My God, I mean, with killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, and the lowest price is guaranteed. Views from your seat. I got to tell you, listen, if you need to see where you're sitting at guaranteed rate right now, It's probably on the team. Uh, I mean, there's so many last-minute deals for this team. Uh, Save up to 60% off buying last minutes on sports, concerts, comedy, theater, and more. Uh, The lowest prices guaranteed or game time will credit you 110% of the difference. That's right. You can make a whole dollar and 10 cents on a Jerry Reinsdorf-owned team uh, I mean, listen, uh, at the end of the day, go to gametime.com, use the promo code locked on NBA. Uh, once again, go to gametime.com, uh, take the guesswork out of it, and use the promo code L O C K E D O N NBA for $20 off. Download the t- Game Time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. What the hell? Yes. You <laughs> So with that said, <laughs> last topic for today, we're going to talk about the Bulls locked into the plane. We're and not going to talk about this. We I'm dressed them. for bed because I'm asleep. That's how I feel about the Bulls playing chances right now. I'm ready to go to bed. That's how I feel about it. Do rag on white tee locked in, ready to go. I'm ready to go to sleep. That's what it is. So many, like, so many questions. So many questions. Oh, I'm ready to go to sleep, bro. That's how I feel about the Bulls being locked in for the play-in. I'm ready for the season to go to sleep. That's how I feel, brother. And I can't wait for Nick to watch this and let's get that text message in the morning. Do rag on, locked on. I've never, I've never even wore the do rag on my own show. But guess what? That's how I feel right now. It's time to go to sleep. Hey, I know, I know Nick finna text you. It's just like, too black. <laughs> just two words. Too black. <laughs> oh, but with that said, hey, realistically. Hey, here's, here's the part y'all don't know. So, like, we on stream yard. So, I could, like, I was doing my area, and I could kind of see something in the corner, but it's, like, over here, so I'm like, what's happening? What's happening right now? <laughs> they just come back. <laughs> oh God! Uh, how you feel about the Bulls being locked in a play- locked in a playing spot, Pat? Oh, I tell you exactly how I feel. Oh, brother, this guy stinks. Yeah, that's how I feel. That's how I feel right there. Like, I mean, um, <laughs> they're, they're okay. Good job. Have fun. Yeah, I mean, you get two more games. Maybe th- maybe you get to a playoff series. Good job. Like I, I told y'all, I'm not going to be fooled by this team down the stretch. I'm not going to be fooled by this team. That, what the? What, what is going on? What the, 
We're back to business. We're back to business. I had to, I had to do my point. Do rag Hayes had to pop up for a second. Like I just I I don't. What are you what are you going towards doing? And and I say this again. I had this conversation last night, right? And Kobe White shot the ball a lot more tonight. Maybe he heard us eight for twenty one tonight, but. Now I'm sitting here looking, where's Ayo DeSumo, right? Where's the Ayo that we've grown to love? Couldn't knock down the three ball tonight. Couldn't get to the basket either. Like, what are we What are we going towards? You don't have guys that are willing to do the same thing every night. You don't have every night players. You don't. You have one every night player. And he's one of the, he's the oldest dude on the team. He's your only every night player. Yep. What are you playing for? You literally have zero every night players that are probably going to be on this team next year. Like, I mean, at this point, keep Zach. At least I know he's going to shoot it 30 times a night. Like, you you have zero every night players, dog. Like, I, I, need, I need people to understand this, right? Like, we talk about Kobe in this most improved player. And I do think that Kobe should be up for most improved player uh, uh, um, this season. I think that Kobe White should be a candidate for that. Okay. But let me just give y'all a stat line here. This is the last 10 for Tyrese Maxey. Now, whether he plays, let, whether he shot efficiently or not, this is last 10. 7 for 26, 9 for 20, 10 for 16, 10 for 26, 11 for 24, 8 for 20, 12 for 23. Guess what he knows? If I don't shoot this ball, we lose basketball games. If I don't if I don't put the ball in here, we lose. He's figured that out some magical way. It's almost like he knows how the court works. Like I just it it it's the it's the same conversation over and over again. We got nice players, we don't have star players. And we don't have players that think they're stars. That's a problem. <laughs> Tyrese Maxey thinks he's a star. Tyrese Maxey's averaging what this season? 20, 26 points a game? He thinks he's a star. He thinks when when uh uh oh uh one leg uh uh Embiid steps back on the court that I'm still going to be a factor in this offense. Yeah, but it was a steady progression to get him there. And and that that's part of this thing too is that and not not to take away from the mindset and mentality that Tyrese Maxey has, but Maxey didn't come into the league with that. Even Doc Rivers set up and once they started seeing who and what Maxey could become, they reinforced that that goes back to what we what we kind of lack, even if we are going to be a team. Like the whole point of this two timeline thing, I talked about this tonight on Central. When when they originally brought in Demar and they spent that money on that veteran piece, and you know at Vooch as well, you know bringing in Lonzo, the whole point was by the end of Demar's contract, you knew who was going to be the next guy to be able to try to lead this team. You brought into DeMar to be a closer, be those type of things. The whole point was, by the end of this three years after the DeMar DeRozan being here, we need to have that next guy. We don't have it. Kobe's played damn good. Don't, don't get me he's wrong. Good but, basketball. He's, but he's super still inconsistent. Well, I know every, every player has a stretch where they have two, three games of not maybe playing well. Maybe once or twice a season. We get it from Kobe once or twice a month. But I think here's here's my pushback on that, right? It's not mm -hmm. to say that you're wrong, but has Tyrese Maxey dealt with the same thing that Kobe White dealt with? True, but the, the difference is, is that when Maxey did it, he had not only stars around him and an MVP caliber one, but also a coach that's been focused on developing that out of him. It seems like Ugh. sometimes Billy's like, hey, let's get that out of him. Bro, I, like, yeah. let's not forget... Doc Rivers turned Harden into a point guard so that Maxi could could score more. Now Maxi's the point guard, but it's still that, yeah. that development piece. You but don't Doc have Rivers, that here. but Doc Rivers also benched him. He did, but he benched him so that he can get more opportunities. Though, I, when you look at it, even even during his benching, his shots went up by design plays, not just by the nature of just 
oh, you're just going to throw the ball up more. He still designed plays. And again, I'm, you, that's not really towards Kobe because Billy Donovan. One of the Kobe things that he has done. Well. I, I don't. Yeah, I don't want it to. It. I don't want it to feel like we're we're slandering yeah, Kobe, but to slander Kobe. Right. To, to me, it's a it's a mindset, right? Like even when Maxi was coming off of the bench, Maxi was like, "I'm shooting this mug. Like you get what you get." And he would not nah, listen. He was a lot more efficient than Kobe was. Kobe had a ton of inconsistencies when he was shooting it. That's why I think one year Kobe had 15 shots off of the bench, and then the next year you talk about Kobe having like eight shots off of the bench. Like there was some inconsistencies that even Kobe was like, all right, I got to stop shooting this mug. But well, I mean, listen, that, that also goes to being able to be efficient on the court while you're out there. But like Tyrese Maxey went through a lot of the same similar situations and coming out on the other side of it, which I think Kobe is coming out on the other side of it as well. You talk about Max, like I, we would all want Maxey on his team as a one. I, I would want Max. I would be like, I would look at Tyrese Max and say, he could be somebody I could build around. He's got Joel Embiid on his team. And I'm like, he could be somebody I could build around here on the Chicago Bulls. Not to say I don't feel that way about Kobe White. I think you can build a team around him, but like, it's a limited team. You know, right? Like, okay, like, there's going to be some times where you're going to need some help. Yeah, and I, and I think you got to say that about Maxi too. I'm sorry. I get what you're saying as far as, like, just ha having somebody with the mentality to just go out there and make shots that's cool. Corey Maggette did that. But you still uh, – Maxi is not a player where I'm looking at and saying – and I'm saying that Matt, they're 13 and 27 without Joel B. Let's, like – yeah. No, no. It, it's it's, it's you still, for putting up yeah. shots, but – but but I yeah. think the I think the mindset doesn't change there, right? The Tyrese Maxey's mindset was Embiid's down. I got to take more shots because I don't got Embiid. I know what I got to be. I feel like Kobe's mindset has been not that he don't need to take. And the the injury plays into that. I don't want it to feel like I'm 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 coming at Kobe, but like the guy who was the like there felt a point in this season. And correct me if I'm wrong. Where you felt like Kobe can be a number one. Like he was yeah, scoring the way at that he was level. Playing. Yeah, he was he was playing at the level for the Bulls, right? It yeah. has to be sustained more before you can say it for sure, but yeah. Right, and and I feel like that has gone away. Like, I don't feel like Kobe comes into, and now injury may play a part in it. We may, y'all know how the Bulls go. Like, at the end of the season, it's just like, and now he has to have surgery on his entire right side of his body. It's like, oh, okay, well, now I know why. So, like, maybe that plays a part into it, but with Kobe White, that mentality to me went away. And now DeMar is turned back into a little bit more of DeMar. And we've seen it sparingly where it's like, I'm I'm DeMar that's going to shoot this mug. I'm DeMar that's going to facilitate this mug. We yeah. saw it yesterday where he was facilitating DeMar. And it's like, perfect. Keep it up. He didn't. <laughs> facilitating and you took 20 shots is crazy. <laughs> still took 20 <laughs> shots yesterday. Hey, but, I mean, yeah. he still took 20 shots. But what, nine mm -hmm. assists yesterday? Like, hey, good assist day. Something like that. Something like good that. assist day. Yeah, I mean, like, I'm I'm, I'm shooting, but I'm still getting people involved. Like, I just, I feel like the 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 DeMar that gets eight assists becomes the DeMar that gets eight assists when Kobe White and Ayo DeSumo say, give me the ball, we putting up shots. Versus the DeMar where he's like, oh, I passed you the ball and you passed it back to me. What What's going on here? <laughs> And I feel well, like I I guess tonight Kobe didn't have the advantage, right? Kobe didn't have the the matchup advantage. Yeah, I, yeah, John but I was gonna be sure difficult. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I O dang sure did. Like, I'm not saying it has to be Kobe every night either. We've talked about that multiple times. I'm fine with somebody else saying I gotta be the guy to step up, but dang it, somebody else say it. You said somebody else just do it, huh? At least I owe. Like, I mean, he's he's yeah. kind of done it a little bit. At least him. <laughs> I agree. I agree. We'll see, man. Well, six more games, bro. Six more games. Oh, God. Like Durag Hayes said, I'm ready to go to sleep, bro. That's Durag it. Hayes is hilarious. Hayes. <laughs> I don't even know what made me think of that. I was just sitting there. I'm like, I want to do something crazy. Bet this is what I'm going to do. Angel Reese went one for 10 in the second half. That's all I need to know. Hey, uh, follow us on everything at Locked On. You can follow me on everything at Path the Designer and uh, future Chicago Sky player right there. A little bit. Little, little Angel future. Reese? Angel Reese, little, maybe. Is she, maybe. Hey, listen, they have two picks in the first round. Not with the first pick. We'll see where she, where she falls No, at, she'll but, be. I mean, Caitlin's going to be one, right? I mean, that's, well, that's, well, no. The, they don't have the number one pick. They have two picks in the first round. They have number... Three I mean, they nine, got a, like I was that. gonna say they got a top three pick. She might fall yeah. to three. 
Uh, and no, well, Angel Reese is not going in the top five, bro. You haven't you haven't been. She's not going in the top five. You don't think Angel Reese going top five? Angel Reese is not going in the top five anymore, bro. She felt she, she got exposed. They, they I'm not saying she shouldn't go in the top five, but she's not going in the top hey, five. I take her top five. What Angel Angel put up uh, right Angel now? Might have, Angel Reese might have had a twenty and twenty game tonight as bro. as an aggregate, right? So this aggregates all the mock drafts as an aggregate. They got her going seven. Who's coming to us? Uh, so right now, uh, Rakia Jackson at number three, which I do agree with. And then they got us drafting. At, we also drafted number eight. So like I said, it's possible she could fall to us. We'll see what happens. See what I happens. I mean, I, I don't know. That's tough for me, though. <laughs> hey, yeah. hey, listen, it's tough to teach 20 and 20, bro. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. Hey, but uh, guys, thank you so much. You can follow me at CEO Hayes, man. Locked on Bulls is free and available on every podcasting app and platform, as well as YouTube and the Odyssey app. For Pat, the designer, this has been Locked on Bulls, and we out, y'all. Peace. All right, I need a drink.